Five World Explorers. Oh. As you know, we also like to do experiences, and so tonight we did a very special experience for the three of us. <laughs> we met this person. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> so watch the whole video to see who we met. Uh huh. This is the second video where we meet someone that we all love this time, though. All of us. All of us. Emma, you too, right? We're going to meet someone so, so cool. Basically, we've been reading this cool series. I think we got it in Savinia. Oh, oh, you think? I, I'm, okay, I'm pretty sure <laughs> we got it in, I got this first book in Slovenia. I started reading it, and then I said, Emma, you should read it. And at the beginning was like, no, I don't know. And then she started reading it, she's like, oh no, it was in Croatia. Where I got it. So Emma started reading the first one, and I was like, Mama, you should read it too. And so then we all started reading the series. So it became a book club. It became, yeah, a book club. It's Our really. A private book club. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but a lot of people had. So when we first got it, it was suggested for Harry Potter fans. So of course, because he read Harry Potter, so he got the book. Thankfully, Mom got it because she paid. <laughs> but anyway, the series is called Keeper of the Lost Cities. The author is Shannon Messenger. And where are we going? To meet Shannon Messenger! She now has nine books, but before that she had 8.5. So technically she made 10 books to her series. Cosimo has been bugging us since he found out that she was writing the ninth. another book. <laughs> oh, I, I can't wait to get it. Oh, I can't wait to get it. Blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, the other day, as I was checking on uh, Instagram, I saw that she was going to be in California and we were going to California. So I said, oh, it would be cool if we just went to her book presentation. And then I saw that she was actually coming to Arizona <laughs> right half an hour from where we'd stay. So I'm like, I guess we just, it's meant to be. So here we are. Guys, I don't know if this video is going to be public or not because her. if she might be a little bit too famous, she's probably going to be covered in bodyguards, like a circle of bodyguards. You have to give the book to a bodyguard and she's going to go inside. But yeah, hopefully we can meet the Shannon of the Messenger. Okay, let's see. see you. Okay, we got the book. It was three tickets. We got Wait. one book. Here. Yes. I don't know what that is, but yeah. That's how she's fine. <laughs> Someone is really excited. Emma, oh. what's that? If you read the book, this is Iggy. And who made that? Oh, Me! <laughs> oh, you made it! No, it was... Cosmo <laughs> made it. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to give it to her. Oh, it's your gift? Uh -huh. Very cool. Uh -huh. On behalf of Changing Hands, thank you for supporting our authors. Thank you for buying their books. Thank you for being here tonight. She is the New York Times and USA bestselling author of the award-winning middle grade series. The reason we are here tonight, Keeper of the Lost City. What is it like to spend a decade with the same characters? It is bizarre. I mean, it's also amazing. I actually came up with the idea of the Keeper series in 2008. So it's actually been 14 years with these characters. I mean, I remember telling my agent from the very beginning, like, I feel like this story is huge. I feel like it could easily be like 10 books. But as she was very quick to point out to me, you know, when you're a debut author, the odds of getting a 10 book deal, very, very <laughs> tiny. <laughs> but she was just like, you know, we just have to play it by ear, hope for the best. And the series was not a runaway bestseller at all. It was um, sort of called instead of launching into the world. And it was really something where I didn't know if I was going to get to add books to the series. Little bit by little bit, booksellers, teachers, librarians, and readers slowly found their way to the books. And now look at this crowd. <laughs> Did you plan out the series as a whole from the very beginning, or did this grow and evolve over time? I mean, I wish I could be one of those authors that's just like, yes, I saw the entire thing in a clear vision and I knew exactly every detail. No. <laughs> one of the things my writing classes in college, they really kind of instilled is that your first ideas are rarely your best ideas. They tend to be kind of the most predictable, the most obvious, and certainly when you're trying to plot 
you know, something that could be a 10 book series, a lot of those early ideas are going to be first ideas and, yep. you know, maybe not as cool as they could be if you give yourself room to grow. So I knew I wanted to leave room for that, but I also wanted to be able to make sure that the series would feel consistent if I did get to add books to it and tell the whole story. I was writing kind of a different kind of story than certain other fantasy worlds that we see where it's not just that there's like one villain that has risen up and decided that they want to be in charge of everything and the group of kids is kind of in charge of taking that villain down. What we're actually dealing with is a fact that the world of the Lost Cities is fundamentally flawed and the leaders have been ignoring those flaws for thousands of years. And so as a result, we have these rebellions that are brewing. And, you know, we have the Black Swan, who are the good guys, and they have, you know, their solutions to these problems. And then we have the Never Seen, who, you know, kind of just want to burn the world down. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> They're both responding to the same problems. And so I realized by building the world that way and building that into the story, it was going to give me a consistency because the problem doesn't change. Uh, Obviously, Unlocked ended on a cliffhanger. I'm kind of famous for yeah. at this point. So it should surprise no one to know that um, Stealth Loon has another cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> I promise when we are at the last book in the series, there will not be a cliffhanger. How many books? left do we have to look forward to in the Keeper series? When we sat down and did those, you know, outlines and things, like we looked at it and we were like, okay, so we have our plan for book nine and we have our plan for book ten. That's all we need. So I our designer and juicer, we did the contract for book ten, we announced it. I believe the title of that article was One Final Keeper of the Lost Cities book. The series will end at book ten. <laughs> and it's possible I may be having to go back and be like, just <laughs> team Fitz. Yeah. Team Keith. Yeah. It's really, really hard to stay a team. So, like, I know no one ever believes me when I say this, or they think I'm just taking, like, you know, the easy answer, but I just, I don't know. I've read a series where the ultimate pairing at the end. Felt a little bit forced. Yeah. It felt a little bit like this was a decision that the author made from the very beginning. And I feel very strongly like one of the ways that I approach this story is I'm in control of the plot, but I'm not in control of the emotions. Especially like something that. like a romantic interest or something like that. Like that's not something that I ever try to be playing because I feel like it will then end up not being authentic. And so when people are like, so is something settled? Then I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's okay. There's no one way to write a book, so it's always fun to listen to authors talk about their process because you may be sitting there thinking, that's weird, that would not work for me. Or you may be sitting there thinking, that's cool, I should try that. You, know? you need to find your voice when you want to tell a story. For those who don't know, voice is basically like the way that you tell a story. And they're like, it's the most important thing, it's the foundation of everything you do. And you're like, great, how do I do it? And they're like, we can't tell you that, you have to figure it out on your own. And then you just kind of want to pout at the real things, which is a common feeling when you're trying to write in general. But I found something that kind of surprised me in the fact that it helped me to find that place. That the writers should be readers, you should be reading as much as you possibly can. And so I had gone to the bookstore and bought this giant stack of books in all different genres and things. And I found that there were certain ones that I loved. And I didn't learn that much from them as far as voice went. Because a lot of top authors have voices that is just not me, you know, and I will read it and be like, I wish I could write like that, but I never will. But the ones that I kind of was just like, I'm not connected with this book. I don't know why. It's nothing wrong with the book. The books, the books are all wonderful. Um, but it was just not connecting with me. I was feeling like I wanted to kind of put it down and move on to the next one instead. I found that if instead of doing that, instead of putting it down and moving on, if I asked myself, why am I not enjoying this book? Why am I feeling like I can put it down and move on to something else? And by doing that, I started to notice, okay, so for me, I struggle when there's like a really 
long section or description. Like I prefer that in book. And I like dialogue, so I like it when there's a lot of conversation, especially if it's sort of like banter kind of dialogue. But then I would kind of ask myself, okay, so if I were writing this scene, how would I approach it? And it kind of slowly helped me see, okay, so this is how I tell stories. I what do things do you do to overcome? I personally try not to use the words writer's block because I feel like that makes it sound almost like a disease. Like, oh no, I got the writer's block. <laughs> Nothing will ever save me, you know. I really try not to let myself think of it that way. I try not to even think that I'm blocked. I try to just think I'm stuck. It happens to everyone. In my case, um, usually what is going on is one of two things. So writing is all about choices and decision making. But whenever I get stuck, it is either that I have already made a decision that has somehow tied my hands or not given me enough to go forward or, or just kind of trapped me. And that's why I'm stuck right now. And so I need to go back and change something in what I've already done. Or, it's that the story is actually wanting to go this way, and I have decided that I want the story to go this way, and so I'm trying to force it, and the story's like, no, you don't want to go this way. <laughs> if I ask myself, okay, well, what else could happen? A lot of times I'll get that stuff. So it's, it usually just comes down to playing the what if game. Like, what if this didn't happen, or what if something else happened before this? And usually kind of getting up from the, the couch, stepping away from my computer, going on a walk, and kind of playing that what if game in my brain, and I get unstuck. You get some forward motion, and you get some momentum, and, and you start to go with it. And I've also found that when I'm playing that what if game, the more outlandish the idea, right. the more it usually leads me to where I want to go. <laughs> Hollywood is really good at saying, you are not allowed to talk about anything that we just told you. <laughs> <laughs> or you will get in big, big, big trouble. And there is exciting stuff going on behind the scenes, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. I know. I, I, I will also say, just to manage everyone's expectations, getting movies or TV series or anything made is a very slow, very long road. And we add two, three. <laughs>
we've been reading all of your books. Oh my goodness, well thank you so, so you much. So you kept the company everywhere. So what everywhere. happens when you finish the book? Do you get like a break or something? Or you start writing the next one right Pretty away? Pretty much I start writing the next one right away. I mean, I've started book 10, but like just the plotting, so yeah. <laughs> thank you, Bye. nice thank meeting you. you. <laughs> I want to know, what was your favorite and most inspiring part from tonight? Getting the book. That's it? I mean, okay, fine. And when they were talking, that was cool. What part? Like, what was the thing that most inspired you from the, the talk? The part where they were talking about, how if you want to write a book, what do you do? What do you mean what I do? <laughs> if you want to write the book. I'm so, gonna show the video part. I, I don't remember the exact words they said. They said, uh, uh, read up more books so you can get the idea. Uh, Cosimo's gonna write a book then. Yeah. So my favorite part was what Cosimo was saying was when she was talking about writing the book because what are you doing? It was my favorite part, yeah, that was my favorite. Because I loved it. I loved it because I got to see China Messenger. Oh! No, my favorite part was when she was saying how the books that are harder for you to read might be the ones that are actually going to help you be inspired to oh, write. Oh, yeah, that was a cool part. That oh, was cool. come on. But it was real because so many times I find myself stuck reading a book. I'm like, I don't want to read this. And then I realized that I'm just finding out my voice. So I love it. Emma, find your voice now. Then we also going to see Mr. McMahon because not because I read another series of Lisa McMahon. It was super cool. Yeah, I'm cool. Now we have to read his books. Emma? No, I I mean, yeah, we oh could. Oh my gosh, your brother doesn't stop talking. I'm just saying, you said what parts I like. That's the parts I like. Emma? When they talked? When they talked, when he asked her questions <gasps> yeah. about the... Emma, when they talked, when they talked. Was there something in particular that you liked? I liked. the questions? No, I liked all of them. Okay. Yeah, Emma's a little more camera shy tonight. Anyway, it was very cool. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, we did something different. Yep, Purdue. Goodbye. Meet. I am a very big fan of Shannon Messenger. I'm a I'm a big fan. All three of us. No, I'm a big fan. Because you're big? I'm a big fan. Like a little <laughs> big fan. That's why. Took me a bit to get it. Thank okay. You. you know what? Shannon Messenger, you should be watching this video. Okay, if you're watching this video, please say, Hi, I'm Shannon Messenger, and I watch this video. Okay, Shannon Messenger, please watch this video. Okay, bye guys from the five-year-old explorers that are going home. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's a very serious matter. And keep on reading. It's a very serious matter. And you, stop looking at me. It's a very serious matter. <laughs> Get that thing off your head. It's a very serious matter. <laughs> and don't forget to like the video, okay? And comment down below if you saw the whole video and who your favorite keeper character is. And if you read the whole Keeper Lost City series. And what's your favorite book in the series? So yeah, comment down below. See you guys in the next video. And we'll give you free books, just kidding. Huh?